Our question is not if the animal works. We know people have connections with their animals. It, it would be disrespectful to ask that question. We want to know how, right? So we're looking at the human-animal bond, and we're also looking at the technical skills that the dogs are trained to do. What it is that um, veterans find meaningful in that interaction, in that human-dog interaction, um, what veterans come to know and understand about the nature of support, um, how that can be provided, and actually who can be a supporter or a carer. And in this case, um, certainly the dogs playing a really important role. Um, one of the ways that they do that is through that human-animal bond that develops between uh, veteran and dog, but also around um, the specific tasks that those dogs are trained to do um, to better support that uh, veteran in their day-to-day -day functioning. With help by the veterans um, and guidance from them, we've designed a, a strategy by which we can pair the veteran with a dog, not yet fully trained, and they can go through the training process with that dog so that the dog comes to learn their specific needs, their particular patterns of how they show stress, how they experience flashback. During all of this, there's been an interest on the part of the veterans in making sure that we really pick out the profound impact that the dogs bring to them. Because indeed the leaders of the program to partner veterans with dogs are themselves some of the veterans who are paired, paired with dogs. To capture this, we're using technology in the form of smartphones, in the form of, of what are called Bluetooth beacons, in the form of Fitbit devices. These allow us to capture how much time the veterans are spending with the dog, how much the dog makes a difference in terms of bringing the veteran outside, in terms of physical activity and sedentary behavior. We can measure changes in the veteran's sleep levels and the regularity of their patterns using analytic techniques we've um, refined in other, other types of big data work. And we can recognize how much the dog is making a difference in their level of socialization. We have here, maybe you would say, a novel intervention with the service dog of helping our veterans um, respond to their problematic substance use in a way that could be less harmful. So from their post-traumatic stress disorder, nightmares are really a huge concern and very problematic to understand, right? And very painful for them. So you could medicate the individual, right? And medicate and medicate and medicate. And that's what we see that just keeps going up. And then one medication is interacting with another. Some of our veterans, you know, one that we interviewed uh, for another beginning of this project, she was on 56 pills a day, right? So this is just, that's a lot, no matter what it is, it's a lot. So for them then having a nightmare and not having to go through that entire nightmare, but the dog being able to wake them up out of it, or the dog being able to sense when they're starting to go into it through their sense of scent, because they can do that, or body actions or what have you, they're waking up the veteran before they get into that. And then during flashbacks, to wake up and go and intervene before the flashback becomes visceral, before it starts to have physical effect, because flashbacks can cast shadows that last days and days with veterans if they become physical, if they, if they bring the veteran back into the whole thinking and feeling and the whole world of their adverse experiences. They, um, it can really be distressing in a way that will affect just how the veteran feels and their level of suicidal ideation, etc. But the dogs um, stop that within minutes. And that dog is able to be there alongside that individual when at times um, another human may not be able to be in the same way because we're human. Um, it's more difficult and at times would be actually inappropriate to be able to offer 
a gesture to be able to offer some sort of uh, physical or tactile touch that we just we can't do as um, human care providers. We just we just can't for lots of reasons. Where the dogs can be there as a constant, consistent um, companion and support. We have a lot of veterans who share about you know they don't even want to they don't want anything to do with their family that and that may in, involve a small child they want nothing but the dog comes with that non-judgment they don't know they really don't care right and they're there just to be with the veteran and how how the veteran then can start to feel trust a little bit open up just a little bit so this is very non-academic, but I always say the dogs, or whether it was a companion animal or service dog, what have you, is they open the heart just that little bit.